Now, if you have a seborrheic dermatitis that is chronic and doesn't seem to go away with other forms of therapy, then you might have to use a drug like Rofumalast. Because if these things become chronic, it can potentially damage the skin barrier and you can probably get fibrosis, which is pretty bad if that happens on your scalp because, well, obviously that's going to negatively impact your hair health. Rofrumalast and its use in lichen planum pilaris has a rationale in its mechanism of action, right? So if the follicular unit is trapped in a cytokine-rich environment that perpetuates T-cell recruitment and inflammatory signaling, a PDE4 inhibitor could theoretically reduce that inflammatory background radiation, so to speak, in the scalp. Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. So lately, I've been getting some requests from people in the community to talk about conditions that impact the scalp and may potentially fuel pre-existing hair loss issues by making them worse or even being a primary cause in and of themselves. So in this video, we're going to be looking outside androgenetic alopecia and at potential inflammatory scalp conditions that contribute to hair loss. Ultimately, you need to go to a doctor to see if you may have these conditions. And this video isn't medical advice, but merely awareness. Hey guys, before we continue this video, I would like to mention that we now have liposomal monoxidal sulfate on my website, follagens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. And if the order queue is available and open, you can order it there. We're running it as a cosmetic. There are other sort of botanicals inside of this particular topical that are pretty helpful when it comes to conditioning the hair. So that's at Fologens.com, F-O-L-L-I-G-E-N-Z.com. That's f o l l i g e n z dot com. Go check it out and maybe even try it out. See you there. That being said, if you're on something like, you know, oral dutasteride for anywhere between one to two years and you are still losing your hair, this might be a sign for you to look in depth at your hair loss issues and really assess the state of your scalp. So obviously, you have to go to a doctor for that. And with that being said, we are going to talk about Roflumalast and its topical use. So what is it? Well, topical Roflumalast is a small molecule immunomodulator that works by inhibiting phosphodiesterase 4, usually shortened to PDE4. PDE4 is an important enzyme that regulates inflammation by breaking down cyclic AMP, or also known as CAMP. AMP within immune and other cells. And this particular pathway is important when it comes to treating inflammatory conditions. This is primarily because cyclic AMP is basically an internal calm down signal in many immune and skin cells. So because the PDE4 enzyme is breaking down that cyclic AMP, what do you have, right? You have an increase of pro-inflammatory programs, which would be the increase in cytokines like TNF-alpha, the interleukins, whether it's interleukin-23 or interleukin-17 related signaling, chemokines, immune cell recruitment, and other sort of itch mediators. So if you can block PDE4, you can keep the cyclic AMP higher, which tends to shut down inflammatory cytokine production and immune activation, and that translates to less redness, swelling, scaling, and itching across a bunch of of inflammatory conditions. And already, you can see how this might be applicable to some conditions like psoriasis or seborrheic dermatitis, and even potentially autoimmune hair loss cases like lichen planum pilaris or CCCA. And this is why this drug is so exciting. Because when we identify these inflammatory dermatological conditions, they all converge on the shared theme, right? You have barrier stress plus immune overreaction. In seborrheic dermatitis, malassezia yeast and their interactions with the sebum are often part of the trigger that causes inflammation, but the disease is not simply an infection. The problem is the host response. The barrier, your skin barrier, has a disruption and an exaggerated innate and adaptive immune reaction occurs. 
your body responds by increasing the production of inflammasomes, which are protein complexes that come together in response to pathogens or damaged cells in the body. The main job of the inflammasome is to take certain cytokines that are made in an inactive precursor form and then convert them into the active secreted inflammatory form. And they do this by using the enzyme caspase 1. Let's use the example of pro-interleukin 18, which is the inactive precursor form of interleukin 18. Caspase 1 finds pro-interleukin 18 and then it cuts off its inhibitory N-terminal propeptide, which you can think of being its safety cap. So now that this safety cap is off, the mature interleukin-18 can be released from the cell and then bind to its receptor, being the interleukin-18 receptor on nearby cells, which kicks off inflammation signals, most famously pushing immune cells like the NK cells and the T cells, make interferon gamma and ramp up immune activity. Now, if you have a seborrheic dermatitis that is chronic and doesn't seem to go away with other forms of therapy, then you might have to use a drug like roflumilast. Because if these things become chronic, it can potentially damage the skin barrier and you can probably get fibrosis, which is pretty bad if that happens on your scalp because, well, obviously that's going to negatively impact your hair health. And all of this is downstream of what, right? PDE4 signaling. PDE4 is decreasing that cyclic AMP. And if cyclic AMP were higher, right, then the cell is generally pushed into a less inflammatory mode. So let me reiterate that for the audience, right? A higher cyclic AMP activity acts like an internal break on the immune signaling, and it can quell a chronic inflammatory state. So it, it will reduce chronic inflammation from seborrheic dermatitis. So if you're having issues with that, definitely go bring this up to your doctor and try to get your hands on this medication if it is available in your country. Now, we have another condition, right? Psoriasis. This is the clearest example of a cytokine loop disease. Keratinocytes and immune cells amplify each other through the interleukin-23 to the interleukin-17 axis, with tumor necrosis factor also playing a central supporting role. So what's happening in psoriasis? Well, this axis, the interleukin-23 to interleukin-17 that I described, promotes what is known as keratinocyte hyperproliferation. Basically, it creates thick scales and persistent plaques on your skin. And also there's going to be some itching, some inflammation. Altogether, it creates a very, very bad experience. And maybe you guys might need some imagery. So if you're a bit squeamish, I'll have the editor put some, you know, images on the screen. So I'll give you three seconds to look away. So three, two, one. Yeah, that's how, <laughs> that is how psoriasis looks like. So if you're having this sort of chronic scaling and plaque on your skin, Obviously, this can lead to fibrosis and a, you know, a damage of crucial structures like your hair follicles. So you don't want psoriasis to be chronic. You want something that can go in there and be potent enough to just quell the chronic inflammation signals. And again, let's remember, when you block PDE4, this will broadly reduce the pro-inflammatory cytokine and chemokine output upstream. Because here... Note how we have the interleukin-23 and interleukin-17 axis, and these two cytokines are kind of playing on each other, right? It's a bit of a loop. We don't have to target any one of these cytokines. We can just use a broad inhibition, being that PDE4 inhibition, which will bring down the intensity of the loop, which will convert to having a lower inflammatory response. And that's the logic behind the topical reflumolast. We can also have a look at eczema, most commonly known as atopic dermatitis. And the issues here starts from a slightly different place compared to seborrheic dermatitis and psoriasis. Here in eczema, the skin barrier is often intrinsically fragile, influenced by genetics and also environment, and reduce expression of barrier proteins and lipids. In this condition, the immune system response skews toward type 2 inflammation with cytokines like interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 that further worsen barrier integrity and amplify itch and sensitivity. 
Even though eczema, or atopic dermatitis, leans towards the Th2, also known as the T helper type 2 cells, meaning it is the primary dysfunction of those cells that is essentially causing the issue of eczema, it still shares convergent inflammatory wiring with psoriasis and seborrheic dermatitis at the level of the intracellular signaling and cytokine amplification. So turning up cyclic AMP through PDE4 inhibition, or blocking PDE4, that's what inhibition means, right? can reduce multiple inflammatory outputs in parallel, which is why topical roflumolast cream at a lower concentration is indicated for this particular condition being eczema. Now we can look at the, I guess I can say the scarier hair loss conditions being scarring alopecias like lichen plana pilaris. And these are a different tier of problem because the target is the hair follicle itself, particularly the stem cell niche regions that allow for the hair follicle to regenerate itself. Lichen planipolaris is a lymphocytic scarring alopecia where chronic immune attacks leads to irreversible follicular destruction and fibrosis if not controlled. So roflumolast is not approved for lichen planipolaris, but I think there is some good evidence that it could be used off-label for it and maybe even other scarring alopecias that aren't necessarily autoimmune. So it could be mechanical scarring alopecias being traction alopecia, or even neutrophilic scarring alopecias like folliculitis to calvins. But for folliculitis to calvins, I wouldn't say, you know, just my opinion and off the research that I'm looking at, it would not be wise to just use the PDE4 medication on its own because folliculitis to calvins involves an infection of some kind of bacteria. So you might wanna also take medication to fix that sort of infection as well while using this anti-inflammatory agent. There actually is a similar medication to Orflumolast that was used for folliculitis to Calvin's successfully in a case study. I remember reading this and that drug is called Apremolast and it is also a PDE4 inhibitor. But anyway, I digress. Rofrumolast and its use in lichen planipolaris has a rationale in its mechanism of action, right? So if the follicular unit is trapped in a cytokine-rich environment that perpetuates T-cell recruitment and inflammatory signaling, a PDE4 inhibitor could theoretically reduce that inflammatory background radiation, so to speak, in the scalp. And also ease symptoms like perifollicular erythema, burning, or itching. So really, it could help with the pain that lichen planipolaris causes, the excessive itchiness, while you're using other medications to try to treat it as well. Now, again, lichen planipolaris really is one of those conditions where if you have it, it's kind of tough to treat it. There is, you know, potential use of PPAR gamma agonists like pioglitazone, for example, that could potentially help. Maybe even a topical compounded version of pioglitazone may be able to help. But with the literature, it's a bit scant, so we don't know yet. But there's some signals in the literature that points to pioglitazone as being a potential therapy for lichen planipolaris. There's also the use of JAK inhibitors. But again, that's another immunomodulatory sort of chemical class. And it probably wouldn't be wise to pair it with another immunomodulatory agent, as we're talking about here, being the PDE4 inhibitor. So really, the convergence we're looking for is not that all these conditions share one cause. It's that they share a reusable inflammatory architecture that involves the barrier disruption that I mentioned earlier, that sort of epithelial stress that triggers innate immune sensors, which recruit and activate T cells and all these other cytokines that ultimately lead to a sort of chronic state of inflammation, right? And the cause is going to be different for these sort of conditions. But anyway, that's it for this video. And not medical advice, but if you are thinking about specifically using this kind of treatment, go talk to a doctor and see if it's right for you. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I tried not to make it literature heavy, but if you are interested in learning more about these conditions and about this particular drug, Rofrumolast, I think I'm saying it several different times as the video goes on. <laughs> but if you are interested in learning about this particular medication, I'll put some links in the description below so you guys can go check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace out and see you later. Bye.